Damon is stressed. Simone is stressed. But Spencer looked like he catching a new leash on life. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another All-American Homecoming video. In this video, we're going to break down the premiere night episode, season two, episode number one. It was a jam-packed episode. I'm really, really excited to talk about it. Spoiler alert, they're about to have a stressed all season. Spoiler alert, I cackled out of anxiety some comedy but mostly stress the entire time watching everything implode while nate and surprise surprise jr try to hold this whole thing together with shoestring and gum honey if you're new here hit that subscribe button turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my other all-american homecoming content any of the all-american universe lives and some of the other dope things i'm talking about across other various hot television shows like you should really join a tribe by hitting subscribe i think that you are going to love it here but without further ado let's go ahead and get into this episode the episode opens on us getting to see simone in a middle of a match and then also having flashbacks to her over Christmas break seeing Jordan at the Crenshaw Cafe and how Jordan was looking at Layla going back to her conversation with Jordan very short conversation at the party at the beach house um that Jordan attempts to confront her about Damon and what their potential relationship could be but then also going back to her um looking at Layla last looks after feeling how she felt about the charms and then from there we're cutting to damon who was working out at hawkins and um throwing the the baseball and we're getting flashbacks to him with celine and um the discovery and the confrontation about around his true parents um from the very first moments of this episode, we are really thrown into our main characters, picking up, knowing exactly where we're picking up at. This is again, um, well, All Americans episode was six weeks after. This is a week after that. So this is like seven weeks after um, the last episode of last season. And when we're thrown, because the first parts are montages, but then once we pick back up with Simone, she wins the match that we see her competing in. However, Coach Hyam reminds her like, girl, this was just a practice. And honestly, after watching the entire episode, I can see why Coach Hines felt the way that she did. Simone was excited because she had won this match. However, this is different. And I do think that we see, um, a Simone at the top of the episode who might be determined and might be checking the boxes of like good athlete right and you know she's trying to hold on to her top six spot but she doesn't have the mentality of a winner she says that she's been working out all over break and like she's been putting in and doing what she had to do because she wants to win however she also is very much so happy with just winning this practice match against someone else who's already on her team and when you think about it, and again, I didn't notice this until after I watched the entire episode, but when you think about it, Simone is holding or was brought up to top six. So she's number six on the team, right? In reference to people who go out and compete on behalf of the school in the tennis category to attempt to like get the team to have wins. Thea was number one. So in all honesty, she don't technically have Thea's spot, but she's also at the very bottom of the, the competitive part of the team. And that can't just be good enough because once Thea comes back and if she's back to what her normal play was, then she goes right back to the top spot. Throughout this episode, we get to see egos flare and drama build up, but specifically when it comes to Simone on the tennis court, it takes like Spencer and Jordan um, talking to her and trying to, to big her up because she's going through feeling bits of imposter syndrome and doubting herself. But I personally now feel like she should have been doubting herself because all of it is not, it wasn't enough. She was very much so settling for like winning um, practice matches and like doing good enough to be beating the people that are like on her team. But if you can't beat Thea, like Coach Hines says with one hand, then where does that put you? When Simone is sitting down to talk to Spencer and she's like, I feel like my coaches just picked me because I'm the best of the worst. I mean, if there's truth, there's truth. And it's not me trying to come for Simone. However, like at the very beginning, after Coach Hines said something to her, like it's not enough for you to win this practice match. This was against your teammate. It's not that. 
she literally after coach Han walks away she literally is like well i still won though and it's like that is completely not the attitude that you need to have but what i will say is that this feels a lot like what we saw with spencer at the start of season four when he first got to gau and he was trying to prove himself and he felt a little bit entitled um not that i feel like simone feels super entitled but i feel like now that she's gotten to the top six spot she thinks that what she has done thus far is enough to keep her there or all she got to do is keep doing what she's been doing it's like no girl you actually have to be better and that's what coach Han says and if you think about it like look at Thea Thea is methodical she's almost surgical with her analysis of the game with knowing herself and have fully like having full self-awareness of her strengths and her weaknesses on the court of her opponents and that is stuff that we haven't actually seen Simone focus in on it's like this is the first episode that we actually get to see her um she gets Spencer to record her play because she has to actually be able to see her her weaknesses and really drop into that elevated level Level of training that's going to put her in true um, competition or conversation with like Athea. Simone has these dreams of being the next Naomi and being the next Serena. However, she doesn't have the work ethic just yet. And I don't think that that became clear until this episode. And it's not to say that she hasn't been working hard. It's just that she hasn't been working hard enough. She hasn't been focused enough. Um, after this episode, I'm really excited to see where her character is going to go this season because it kind of feels like there's a few things that are there for the taking for her. However, I'm not fully clear on how committed she is to everything that is kind of like open for the taking with her i think coming out of the relationship with jordan and seeing her in a very stable space in her life and then watching how she processes the breakup watches how she watching how she deals with all the awkwardness around like them not actually even being able to have real conversations and all of that seeing thea and damon and how that lands on her um it's been interesting. Like, I, I can't really place my finger on what Simone really wants this season. Like, we hear her say that she wants to be a top competitive athlete in tennis. However, it took this episode for her to realize that she needed to check her ego. She can put up a fight, but that's going to look like her doing the actual work and less about her getting catty and going back and forth with Thea because Thea got smoke for her child. We're going to talk about Thea. Um, and it's really going to be about her focusing in on her. And, and like Spencer said, I think Spencer was such a phenomenal addition to this episode. Everything that he said in their little one-on-one -on -one powwow is something that Simone needed to hear. And it was even better because we watched him actually go through this. So we know that everything that he was speaking was actual truth. It actually worked out for him. And now he's down here competing in a bowl game because he was able to lock in focus on his weaknesses and strengthen them and turn his um, collegiate career around seemingly overnight. Now that's what's going on with Simone when it comes to tennis. Now when it comes to personal child, she wants to portray like she's over Jordan and she don't feel away, but she do feel away. She knows something is happening with Layla and Jordan or there's something there and they won't speak to it. I was beyond annoyed watching her have to be in the all american episode and they're actively avoiding her actively not saying anything Layla giving her those damn charms were out of pocket completely and argue with y'all's damn mama because i'm not finna argue with you about it i said what i said um watching Simone kiss that dude like i get that it's new year's but i don't know maybe she going back to her old one night stand ways and she just want to have fun and okay cool the little corny guy gonna get a kiss Part of me wanted her when she was like, I'm not alone. I got myself. Let let that be that. Like her needing to kiss this guy. I really have no idea where Simone about to go personally. Her and Jordan actually wind up having a conversation after she has to help Spencer break up him and Damon fighting, which we're going to get into that shit in a second um, earlier on. Um, 
but she has a conversation with Jordan and they still don't talk about Layla. Like she basically lets him off the hook and is like, I just want you to be happy without forcing him to actually say and be accountable to the fact that she called this shit last season. She, this is literally the reason why she decided to break up because she wanted to free you to do this. And now you're running around here acting like, well, first you gaslit the hell out of her and made, it, made her feel like she was crazy and just making it up and just wanted to break up with you for Damon. Meanwhile, she was 100% spot on and now you have been avoiding her and you can't even speak to the fact that she was actually right even if you don't tell her that she was right like just being able to speak to the situation so that it doesn't feel as malicious as this is coming off like jordan is coming off like a clown like a snake like he was never really in it and i don't believe that like i really just believe that this is a disconnect when it comes to like the writing and creative around the show because i do believe that the moments that we saw simone and jordan in their relationship and in the thick of their relationship um, that that was true and Jordan is capable of being this intentional this caring this loving this beautiful man who is able to be selfless when he needs and supportive and communicative and all of the things but this little ghetto ass Jordan that's running around swinging on people what like oh I'm not even going to Jordan just yet because I want to talk about Simone but once I get to Jordan, we're going to really talk about why he needed to say what he had to say and why he needed to swing. But Simone personally is dealing with a lot, also still trying to maintain boundaries. I absolutely love the piece of her like, yo, this is something that you probably need to talk to Thea about and giving Damon's relationship respect, giving their friendship respect and being mindful of like how they're moving and being very, very particular about that, given the history that they had, the close call that they kind of like had and like how she navigated from that. And then also understanding how she feels now in, in reference to seeing the whole Layla thing. I think that, um, again, it's really the wild wild west right now for Simone. She can go in any direction. We could see her start serial dating tomorrow. We could see her start sleeping around tomorrow. Or we could see her go celibate and just be focused on tennis. I personally would love for her to just focus on tennis if that's that's what she wants. Um because anybody that is to follow will just be trying to fill the the space of Jordan and what could have been with Damon and I ain't nobody got time for that. Um but I'm, I think I'm probably the most like curious and not sure about what's next for Simone, given that she does have this big fight on her hand for maintaining a spot within the top six, even though Thea winds up after they decide to have their little impromptu tennis match, setting herself back and pushing herself back in recovery. So Simone got a little bit more time, but Thea is definitely coming and she's coming for her. Thea almost whooped that ass with one arm, as Coach Hines said. Simone's going to need to focus and that's it that's all I'm hoping that we get to see a little bit more interactions whether that's like FaceTimes or calls or texts or social media something between Simone and Spencer I think their energies really balance each other out a lot and they are great for each other like for the most part, Spencer was pouring into Simone in this episode. However, she was also able to clock like, okay, I'll talk to you about Damon and Jordan if you're ready to talk to me about how you really feel about the breakup with Liv. And their chemistry and understanding of one another is kind of like unmatched. So I would love to see more in that regard. Touching on Spencer a little bit, in addition to providing support for Simone, he's in town, as I mentioned, for the uh, bowl game. Um, which is going to be a big thing for them. He also winds up playing um, bait, but then also fixer upper for uh, for Cam and Keisha, who are finding themselves in a little bit of a strenuous moment simply because cam has not been forthright about what's going on he didn't tell her about losing a scholarship he didn't tell her that he worked in 50 11 jobs he hasn't told her that the reason why she he didn't introduce her to his parents is because he didn't want to put her in a position where they will blame him blame her and all of that makes sense while i was watching and just watching cam like before they even revealed that he was like working and they saw, had him deliver pizza and he runs into spencer and jordan on campus which is the most hilarious like moment y'all i was literally cackling throughout this whole entire episode it was such a good episode 
I literally sent a voice note to Naya and Melissa like, why don't Keisha understand that he broke, baby? He just don't got no money. It is not you. And I don't know if it's because of experience now or what, but just being able to see certain traits on men who are struggling financially, like y'all do not carry it well. Poor little Tink Tinks. Y'all be really, really struggling. And Cam was doing the best that he could in this episode. I'm glad that it wasn't um any residual resentment for making the choice and choosing Keisha in that moment and singing versus actually choosing a scholarship like it seemed he's 100% just trying to handle his business and do his thing and show up as best as he can and getting all of that out in this episode I absolutely love Keisha definitely needed to be checked and shout out to Nate mother Nate was coming through on multiple occasions in this episode making sure that we're clear from the spark notes of what's going on in both Keisha and Simone's life at the top of the episode to reading Keisha at the end about like look this boy is dealing with this 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 and this and you had a nerve to sit here with a damn attitude and trying to backslide into your old ways and you spent it to make him jealous girl go to hell Nate didn't say that but it was that was the subtext and you know what Keisha was like you know what I probably do need to go to hell because I'm set tripping ultimately Spencer is the one who helps you know Cam plan this little cute little moment at the little party that Keisha decides to throw and they're able to figure it out and I'm totally here for Keisha and Cam they're giving they they gonna continue to give stress but they also gonna give a look they gonna give love and they gonna give progression and I'm excited to see both of the individuals um as they navigate this relationship and how they feel for each other they are quintessentially the two people who didn't want to fall for nobody falling for each other and are scared to death of falling and it's the most beautiful thing to watch and i got off on of keisha and cam when i was talking about spencer the other thing that spencer does is break up jordan from initiating a fight with damon and then also checking jordan who needs to deal with his unresolved issues with simone versus swinging on damon when damon has plenty of other things to worry about like Jordan needed to catch an assault charge if you ask me a win is a win and that Damon was able to land a couple punches too but I wanted Jordan to be beaten and then stomped like the way that he's running around acting a fool the menacing ass Baker twins I can't I really just can't that's it that's all shout out to Spencer for coming to Brinkston and bringing joy and light it's also great to see him like aside from the moment where Simone asked how he felt about the whole live breakup George, um spencer seemed happy which is really a pleasant thing to see because on all american we don't really get to see that especially in the last part of last season in this first episode so i was really excited to see uh spencer with a different temperament a better positive temperament now let's talk about little jr because jr is the other little pacifist the one who is providing spencer like speeches at this point i'm only dubbing them nate speeches and spencer speeches because they the ones who have earned it jr just i think lucked up in this episode and he is on cloud nine then gone away for christmas and made peace with his parents and decided all oh, he's bringing is positive vibes he got his brother and he don't need nothing else but you're gonna go ahead and kept this little raggedy ass gift that your mother brought in here talking about our mother damon's like that i don't know that lady i don't know her <laughs> jr hands him the gift and he's like Mm, okay thanks as he should i mean damon winds up opening it up but still i like the moments of jr speaking up in this episode y'all know i'm not a huge fan of his character i kind of just want to ignore his character however he's seeming like he's going to be the voice of reason and he did a really good job of not centering himself and being selfish like i have felt like he was doing um last season so we ain't got no problems with jr he's able to you know not resent his father but then also not allow his father to use him to get to damon and he forces his father to go talk to damon if he wants to do it himself his little raggedy ass father is trying to put pressure on damon to stay put pressure on amara to make him make a decision soon and like get him to stay and it's like sir you are literally the the reason why all of this is happening if you wasn't an ancient negro none of this would be happening if you could cop to your wrongdoing well before damon gotta confront your goofy ass none of this would be happening if you could get your smug ass head out of your smug ass then maybe we would not be here if you could not, if you could just humble yourself and come to damon maybe groveling 
maybe we could be working with something but you come in as this interim coach talking about it's your program now it's your rules and just dismissing what these kids have known and love from coach marcus like your energy has been off from the jump thank god selene is getting a divorce because who the hell will want to be with you you really need to make a turn for the better and i can't blame damon for wanting to transfer because just know it's not even giving coach marcus light it's giving coach marcus what never in the form of a balding man man go to hell um speaking of damon i think damon has the most tension in this episode so Mona's struggling on the court and then running into jordan however damon is struggling with the processing of his per of his parents deciding whether to leave this program that he gave up the nl mlb for because of one of his parents navigating you know getting to a good place with his brother jr dealing with thea's hot and cold ass a mountain pressures from auntie amara who went from telling him he had plenty of time to giving him 48 hours like they were putting this man through spencer level turmoil and i really hated it for him but you know damon is going to be all right regardless and then jordan pops up and want to try to swing on him yeah damon was going through a lot in this episode but he has simone to come to simone also rallied for him when it came to thea because she was icing him out at the moment that he needed to talk the most i think that damon did take his time and do a really good job of like trying to think everything through and by the end of the episode thea realizes her errors and she's like i'm gonna ride with you regardless whatever your decision is going to be which is great jr is gonna ride with him regardless i know that's something that people were talking about before of like if jr was going to feel a way about him transferring but i think jr is like truly happy with just having his brother and he wants Damon to be happy. Aside from Damon, like, not wanting to play for the coach at Hawkins, I think that that's just the, the lesser of two evils. Um, and I really enjoyed watching Damon speak about Simone in the way that he did while Jordan was attempting to confront him for stealing Simone away. I'm not going to go into it into too much depth in this video, but I think I'm going to do like a separate, maybe a live or a separate video to just talk about how men and women kind of see relationships differently. And honestly, the fact that Damon and Simone have been able to develop a platonic relationship, I think um, is really, really dope. But looking at Jordan, it really concerns me that his default is that Damon was plotting on Simone the entire time. Damon didn't respect Simone or him or their relationship the entire time. Jordan gives me the person who's of the belief that men and women really just can't be friends. And it's clear because you weren't just friends with Layla, like you now started to pine after her. And that is a really, really scary thought because that to me takes me down the rabbit hole of like, men will only invest in you or believe in you or support you in the hopes of at this moment in time or later on down the line, connecting with you physically. And that personally disgusts me. But again, I'm not going to go into that here. If y'all want to have that conversation and like deep dive into that talk, let me know in the comment section down below and we can set that up because I would love to explore it. Damon is giving me hope, but then the little raggedy Negroes like Jordan just are trying to snatch that hope away. Since I was just talking about Jordan, I also want to go back and take a second to talk about him feeling the need to roll up on Damon because he's no longer with Simone and he don't have to respect their friendship. Jordan was projecting, in all honesty. All that he described to feel like what's happening with Simone and Damon was literally what he had going on with Layla because he is incapable of actually developing a strong platonic relationship with the woman. And that's the nicest way that I can I can possibly put it. The fighting was disgusting. Thank you, Spencer, for repositioning things so that he realized that he actually has to deal with Simone versus trying to deal with Damon and like try to find some closure there. But I feel like all his closure happened when he decided that he was going to jump head first into wanting something with Layla. If anything, Simone actually needs closure and she still don't get the closure that she needs because she lets him off the hook completely of like, I want you to be happy and with whoever and however that looks, I'm 100% fine with. So he never actually has to speak to what he actually wants. Like I mentioned this before, but like 
Jordan just gets completely let off the hook. And it, and I struggle with both these damn Baker twins because at the end of um, All American, whilst Bolivia do break up, I do believe that Olivia was let off the hook because of how Spencer positioned everything for the breakup. And he took on the brunt of the self-awareness in the relationship, the like setting free to be happy and regardless of how that made him feel. Simone wound up doing the exact same thing. She was not able to actually address how um, gaslit she felt, how she potentially could deep down want validation for seeing something, calling it out and knowing Jordan well enough to be able to speak to it and just being able to have him cop to that. Like, <sighs> It's going to be a long, hard road with me and these Baker twins this season because both Olivia and Jordan are two sides of the same coin. And it's unfortunate for the people that love them. In a more happy note, um, Coach Marcus actually has spent the last six weeks checked into a facility where he's getting therapy and treatment he's back on his meds and regulated i think that by the end of the episode he shows up at auntie amara's door after he's been avoiding her and everybody else for the last six weeks so i think that he's coming back for his spot thank god um but he struggled in this episode with really feeling like he was ready to re-enter society and rejoin um his community and really struggle with the idea of what people might have thought about him based off of his episode that we got to see towards the end of last season and i already told y'all i was predicting that we were going to go through a um mental health black man in therapy arc with him and i was really excited to see that that's exactly where we start off and i always want to see it so i'm excited for whatever coach marcus decides to do next personally i think that we need to go ahead and just jump back into being coach because our meds are regulated we feel strong our therapist actually feels great for us however i can understand why he's still feeling a little bit nervous to trust it because he did get overwhelmed and take himself off his meds last last um season but sometimes nothing beats a failure but a try and he might just have to throw himself in a try all right y'all that is my breakdown for all american homecoming season two episode number one let me know if i left anything out in the comment section down below i'm really stopping because i feel like i talked about everything but maybe not i am going live every tuesday after new episodes premiere on monday at 5 p.m pacific standard time 8 p.m eastern for the all american universe after show and i will be doing pre-shows before episodes on monday at 2 p.m pacific standard time 5 p.m eastern standard time if you made it all the way to the end of your, the video drop four tennis racket emojis in your comments so i know that you're a real one i gotta show you some extra special real love and if you are new and you made it all the way to the end you know you can't leave here without subscribing and hitting that like button but also turn on your bell notification so you don't miss out for when i post additional all-american universe content it's your good sis you let it talk tv with and i'm gonna see you in the next one